Adjustment layers are incredible, but they aren't built into Final Cut Pro, and I use them in every single project I create. To do stuff such as color grade a whole film, color correct a section of a video, manipulate a group of clips, or just create an effect segment. You can even use them to create movable markers. There's so much you can do with them. So why aren't they part of the core product? Honestly, I don't know. And I'm still surprised every time Apple puts out an update and doesn't include them. It's, it's probably something to do with them not wanting to muddy their magnetic timeline. Ultimately, all they really do is allow you to apply effects and transformations to one layer, the adjustment layer, that then get applied to all the clips below. That's right, it's the same principle that Adobe brought in for Photoshop years ago and then introduced into Premiere Pro. Now, I'm a bit of an Apple fanboy, but I still don't understand this one. But yes, you can do similar things using compound clips, but it's just not the same. Fortunately, there's a way to create them if you have Apple's motion software, but it's your own time that's better saved for other things, to be honest, especially when I'm giving them away. You can download them for free from my online store at garethbartlett.co.uk. You are welcome. And then once you've put it into the right folder, here we go, you ready for this? So it's into your hard drive and then users, movies, motion templates, titles, and then paste that little freebie in there. Once you've put it in the right place, you can then find it in Final Cut under, you've guessed it, the Titles Browser. My custom ones come in three flavors, 30 seconds for your Instagram Reels, one minute for your YouTube Shorts, or 10 minutes for your longer projects that you can then customize to fit. Then you just add it to your timeline above the clips you want to affect. So if we take the 30 second adjustment layer and add that down here, we can trim that off there, lovely. So this is now the exact length of our project. All that's left to do is whack whatever effects, corrections, and transformations you desire onto that layer. Let me show you how I would use this to color grade a whole video or just a group of clips that specifically need some adjustment. So what I've got here is some clips from last week's video about how I got into film photography. It's just some shots of a Polaroid camera being used. All we're gonna do is take our adjustment layer, bring that down over the top, Clip that off at the end. And now we're gonna drag in a LUT. So I like to use MLUT by Motion VFX. Double click that to bring that onto the adjustment layer. And now we will go and choose a LUT. What I'm gonna go with for this one, because it was quite a vintage vibe, I'm gonna go and use Matty Hapoya's uh, original V1 LUTs. I really like the Cine Warm Lift Shadows one. And you can see our LUT here is at 100%, which is for a lot of these clips quite strong. So we're going to dial that back. Don't ever feel you have to use things at 100%. Sometimes you just want a little, little bit of it. So we can see now that this adjustment layer has affected all these clips beneath it. They all now look a little bit more vintage. And if we play through this, what we can do is turn this adjustment layer on and off by hitting the V key like we would do for any clip, right? So you can see now the effect that's having now is on and now it's off. You can hover over a clip, turn it on and off. It's a quick way of previewing your grade or your color corrections. Now, maybe we don't want a lot on there. Let's delete that adjustment layer and start again. Maybe we decide we want all these clips to be black and white. Let's just add a black and white LUT on. Let's go to Peter McKinnon's Genesis BW. Now that we'll keep this at 100% because we want it black and white. Now look how beautiful and easy that is to make everything black and white. Maybe we want to color correct these clips to just give a boost in the midtones or something like that. We can do that. Just go into the color wheels for the adjustment layer and bring up the midtones. It's going to affect all those clips below it. Maybe we want to bring the shadows down. Who knows? Maybe we'll boost the highlights. Let's go crazy. Maybe we really want to just boost all the saturation and make it look over the top. Here now, look, all those clips underneath look ridiculous. On and off. On and off. Easy. One thing I used this for a couple of videos ago was with a time lapse. I had lots of clips that had been cut from a time lapse video and put them together and put an adjustment layer over the top and then keyframed an edit 
of a zoom in and out so it was much smoother than just doing it per clip basis. Let me show you. So here are the clips I'm talking about. This was from a video where I was transforming this very studio. So what we have with the original clips without the adjustment layer is just a series of clips, one after the other, that are just a bit jolty. There's nothing really too interesting going on there. So to just spice things up a little bit, I brought in these adjustment layers. I'm gonna show you the final effect now before I show you how to do it. So you can see here, rather than jumping, you've got a slow zoom out, which just adds a little bit of class to it, right? And then on the end of that clip, I just zoom in again. How did I do that? It's really easy. It's just using keyframes. So let's delete these and start again. So I'm gonna go and grab my adjustment layer and shorten it to the length of the clips that we want to cover. So it was up to this clip here, where I stop and have a little cheeky cover. So the question we have to ask is, do I wanna start zoomed in or finish zoomed in? So on this one, let's just start zoomed in. So I'm gonna to go to the start of the clip. I'm gonna add a scale keyframe and I'm gonna punch in a little bit. Let's just take this up to 115%. And then I'm gonna to go to the end of the clip and go to that very last frame. I'm gonna put another keyframe in for scale and then I'm just gonna bring this back to 100%. So just adding two keyframes, one at the start, one at the end, change the scale and then when we play it back, we get this. So easy, so simple, but makes it a lot more visually interesting. What you can do, of course, is add other keyframes into this. You can change the position. You can change individual color keyframes. Let's do something crazy, sod it. Right, so I'm gonna bring in this adjustment layer. We'll make it the length of the clips. So at the start now, I am gonna rotate this left by 4%. And I'm gonna zoom in to cover the gaps that that's left. This is a bit of 4K footage, so I'm all right to punch in a little bit. So there we go. We're gonna put keyframes in for the rotation and the scale. So we're rotating four degrees and zooming in 113%. Then we're gonna to go to the end of the clip, set some keyframes there, and we're gonna go back to 0% rotation and 100% on the scale. And how dreadful is this gonna look? Let's have a look. It's not as bad as I thought. Actually, that's not bad. I thought that was gonna be dreadful, but that's okay. Quite well, like it actually. So there you go, there's just two things you can do with adjustment layers. They are really handy. Typically for me, at the end of an edit, I'll drop a LUT or two onto it, play with the mix levels, add some final color wheels to tweak the overall look of the project, and Bob's your uncle. Did I just say Bob's your uncle? That's ridiculous. One handy thing about adjustment layers is you can turn them on and off as you would any other clip, which means you can use the V key to compare the before and after look of your section very quickly as you watch through the numerous clips. Please let me know what you use adjustment layers for in the comments and what other video or photo tips you'd like to see. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell, all that sort of stuff. Really does help, very grateful. And see you in the next video. I almost said see you in the next one then. I hate when people do that. See you in the next one.